All right, this will be a presentation on simple machines. This is all the inclined plane family of simple machines. What do we got? We got inclined planes, we have wedges, and we have screws. And of course, inclined planes, wedges, and screws are a big part of our everyday lives, uh, especially uh, inclined planes and screws. You may not see or think about wedges as often, but just a common household nail is also a wedge. So what are we talking about here with mechanical advantage? Well, mechanical advantage is the ratio of the magnitude of the resistance and the effort forces, or the ratio of the distance traveled by the effort versus the uh, distance traveled by the resistance force. So we look at these ratios and figure out what kind of uh, ratios we want if you're a designer, if you want to manipulate speed, you want to manipulate distance, forces, or the function. All right, so they're very important in all types of engineering and design. So let's take a look here. We have a common wedge, and there's two options here, right? We're lifting the package up, or we're pushing the package up the inclined plane. So this has a mechanical advantage of four to one. What does it tell us about this simple machine, about this mechanism when we say that? Well, the magnitude of the forces. The magnitude of the force required to lift that package up vertically is going to be four times greater than it took to push it up the inclined plane uh, if there's negligible friction. Uh, what about the magnitude of the distances? Well, the distance traveled as you lift it up vertically is going to be one-fourth, or the distance up the ramp is going to be four times greater than the distance that was lifted vertically. These will produce a four to one mechanical advantage. All right, so one is the magic number. What does that mean if we have a mechanical advantage of one? Well, that means that the effort force and the resistance force, or the effort distance and the resistance distance are the same. Now, if we have a case where it's greater than one, the mechanical advantage in this case, then our effort force is less. All right, we're putting in less effort force than the resistance force. And this is good in many, many situations, but not all. Or we can say that the effort distance is therefore greater than the resistance distance. Uh, both of these situations are situations where you have a, a mechanical advantage greater than one. If it's less than one, well, then that means we've got to put more force into it. When we're doing putting that effort into it, we're putting more force and getting out less resistance force. But we might be getting something else out, like distance, right? Our distance is going to be a lot less that we have to put in, and we get a much greater distance out of it. And there are times when that also is advantageous for us. Remember, mechanical advantage can never be less than zero. Ideal mechanical advantage is the theoretically based calculation for the mechanical advantage. This is, we're going to not have, worry about friction. What would be the case, uh, what would be the mechanical advantage if there was no friction, for example? Uh, we're going to look at the ratio of the effort distance versus the resistance distance. Uh, it's used in efficiency, it's used as a safety factor in calculations, and it's an easy way to for a designer to start to look at what the mechanical advantages of the system before a prototype is even built and we can actually do actual testing. Right? So at that point you're going to look at what's the ideal mechanical advantage. As far as the actual mechanical advantage, we probably need our device. Right? We need that, that simple machine to actually exist so that we can measure our two forces. So for example, we can look at our resistance force and our effort force and find that ratio. Now friction is going to be an issue. Um, it's always an issue in life when you're working with an actual machine. And that's going to create a, a situation where the actual mechanical advantage is never as good as the ideal mechanical advantage. So let's take a look at the inclined plane as our first example. This is what we started with. This is what the base of this whole family are all uh, inclined planes. So we have a flat surface set at an angle or incline and no moving parts and we're able to lift objects or push objects or pull objects up that inclined plane like the roller coaster you can see here on the right. So let's take a look at some numbers here. If the effort distance is 15 feet to slide this little cart up and down this 
um, this ramp here, then that's our effort distance. As opposed to this height here of four feet, that would be our resistance distance. So we're going to actually travel 15 feet, but what do we accomplish? We accomplish four feet. And those are our factors here, 15 divided by four. So we have a distance, uh, we're going to label that L here in this case, the length of our ramp for our effort distance, and H for the height of our ramp for our resistance distance. We're going to take L divided by H. L is also the length of the slope, of course. And so what's the ideal mechanical advantage of this incline plane? Pause the video, grab your calculator and a piece of scratch paper, and go ahead and calculate that and see what value you get. Now that you've done the calculations for this uh, situation, hopefully you got the values that I'm going to reveal here. The ideal mechanical advantage would be 15 feet divided by 4 feet. 15 feet for the effort distance, 4 feet for the resistance distance. And you'll get a number about 3.75. And if we round that off, it's a 3.8 to 1 mechanical advantage. So greater than 1, and which is what we expected. If you look at those values, we should expect to see a mechanical advantage greater than 1. If we look at uh, this ramp situation up here, we, should, we know that we're going to get some sort of mechanical advantage out of this. We traveled a longer distance, and we probably provided a smaller force than the resistance distance and the resistance force. So 3.8 to 1 makes perfect sense. All right, so let's see what the actual mechanical advantage would be. So now I've supplied the values. It took 20 pounds of effort to lift this cart. Uh, this cart has a weight of 50 pounds. All right, but we only had to put 20 pounds in it to get it up this ramp. So in that situation, what would be the actual mechanical advantage? Pause the video, take out your cal use that calculator and that scratch paper, and calculate the value. Here's what you should have gotten. An actual mechanical advantage, of course, is the ratio of the resistance force, cart weighed 50 pounds, divided by the effort force. It took 20 pounds of force to push it up the ramp. We do the calculation, divide, we get 2.5 to 1 actual mechanical advantage. Not the same as the ideal. It's close, but not the same. It's a little bit less, exactly what we would expect it. Whenever you do a calculation, look at that value. Don't just accept it, but look at it and see, does it make sense for this situation? A good designer, a good engineer always needs to do that. Next step, what about the efficiency? Well, efficiency is the ratio of the ideal mechanical advantage versus the actual mechanical advantage, right? Actual divided by ideal. Pause the video, calculate the efficiency. Now that you're done with those calculations, Let's see what you got. Percent efficiency is the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage times 100. Well, that's 2.5 divided by 3.75 times 100 gives us a 67% efficiency. Pretty efficient, certainly better than 50-50, but um, there's quite a bit of loss there. There was quite a bit of friction uh, slowing us down. and that's not unusual. You got the, the wheels and the axles there, the, the axles rubbing against the inside of the wheels. And um, there's also the rotational inertia to overcome for those wheels. So this is kind of what we would expect. Now, let's move on to the wedge. A wedge is still an inclined plane. It functions that way. Um, we want to start with a wider surface and taper it down to a point. Um, and that point will, the pressure, will ins you know, insert itself into the wood or whatever else we're uh, using the wedge on, and it can provide a great amount of force. So a large force provided to the top of this wedge uh, by a hammer or a sledgehammer can produce a really large splitting force. All right, so let's take a look at ideal mechanical advantage. We're going to measure the length of this wedge from top to bottom perpendicular to this surface. And that's because we're actually pushing this wedge in this direction, right? This is the direction that we're pushing it in. 
So we're not going to measure the length of this ramp. We're going to measure the height of this and call it L, or the length of this uh, wedge. So our effort distance divided by our resistance distance. Same equation that we've been seeing. The effort distance is going to be this L, all right? From the tip to our platform here, our little flat portion that we're going to be hammering on. That's our effort distance. That's the distance tra traveled by the effort. And we're going to compare that to the H distance, this distance from here to here, all right? So this ratio will give us our ideal mechanical advantage. So um, that, and that shows it here, right? L perpendicular to the height and then the height of it. So what is the ideal mechanical advantage of this wedge? Pause the video, do the calculation. You'll be happy you did. All right, are you happy? <laughs> well, maybe you won't be happy that you did the calculation, but you'll learn a lot more if you do the calculations as you go along with this video. So we have a length of 10 divided by a height of 3 inches. And that gives us 3.3333, right? So 3.3 is our mechanical advantage. All right, that's still greater than 1, and uh, we'll do very nicely. So actual mechanical advantage. Well, let's say we take this wedge out, we stick it in a piece of wood, we slam onto the top of it with 250 pounds of force, and we happen to have some pressure gauges, some force gauges uh, attached to it, and they register 700 pounds of force horizontally, pushing to the left and pushing to the right. All right, so there's our ratio of the resistance force, 700 pounds, to our effort force, 250 pounds. So what's the actual mechanical advantage of the wedge on the right? Pause the video, do the calculation. We get an actual mechanical advantage of 700 divided by 250, which is 2.8 to 1. So again, less than the ideal mechanical advantage, exactly what we expected to see. So what kind of efficiency are we getting out of this wedge? The efficiency of, is going to be the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal times 100. So 2.8 divided by 3.33 times 100 gives us 84%. So this was more, uh, this case here was uh, a better efficiency than we saw with our inclined plane of only 67%. So let's move on to the screw. There's two components to a screw. First, we have an inclined plane. And we're demonstrating that with this piece of paper that's been cut into a shape of an inclined plane. Then we're wrapping it around this pencil here. And by wrapping it around this pencil, we get a screw pattern, right? And of course, this pattern goes round and round and round and around this pencil. And the gap between the edges of the paper we're labeling as the pitch, which is the same as the distance between one screw and another. This is a Acme style thread on this. You notice it's very square in pattern from the top of this thread to the top of that thread. And that's going to give us our pitch. So we're combining the inclined plane with a wheel and axle. What kind of things can we get out of a screw? Well, it changes rot rotary motion rotational motion into linear motion. It's one of the ways of doing that. That is very, very handy um, to use in different machines. It's also often, and where you're most likely to see it, as a threaded fastener. Uh, works very well uh, for that, better than just a simple nail. Very large mechanical advantage, but also large amount of frictional loss, as we'll see. Here we have a bolt sitting here to the right. From the center of that bolt, to one of the flats is the effort arm distance. Now that would be if you were turning this thread with your finger and your thumb. What if you put a wrench on it? If you put a wrench on it, then the length of that wrench from this end where your hand is, to the center of effort from where your hand is on that wrench to the center of this bolt, that becomes your effort arm distance. Uh, next important thing, we're showing the pitch again as the distance between the threads. And notice that is how far it'll travel every time we turn this thing around once, this bolt. Uh, and the diameter is also demonstrated here. 
So these are all important things when we consider a bolt um, or a screw or a th um, is there thread information. And as a matter of fact, if you were shopping for a bolt or a screw, uh, this information would be listed on the package or on the website. And here's our diameter, one half inch. 13 represents, of course, the threads per inch. And NC represents the thread description, uh, the shape of the threads, coarseness or fineness. A fine bolt is going to have a lot more threads per inch. It won't be 13, maybe it'll be 20, 24, or so forth. And the if it's coarse, that number will be smaller. So if this bolt has 13 threads per inch, then what's the pitch? The pitch isn't 13. The pitch is the inverse of that. Instead of 13 threads per inch, the pitch is 1 13th of an inch. So the question is, how far will this screw with 13 threads per inch move linearly if it's turned one full rotation? Well, hopefully you answered 1 13th of an inch. Okay, very good. All right, so let's look at the ideal mechanical advantage. We have a different bolt here. This bolt is a quarter 20 bolt. Quarter inch diameter, 20 threads per inch. This is a very common bolt. We uh, use this often in our own lab and have a, quite a large selection of them. So the effort distance divided by the resistance distance. Well, that looks very familiar. We've seen that over and over again so far. But what are we talking about now? Well, the effort distance would be one rotation of this bolt. All right, well, that's a circumference. And the resistance distance is going to be the distance this bolt travels linearly downward every time it revolves one circumference. And of course, that's governed by the pitch. So the ideal mechanical advantage is the circumference divided by the pitch. Well, circumference is, a, is calculated by 2 pi r. And the pitch, we're going to use the letter P to signify pitch. R is the distance from one flat of that bolt to another, unless, of course, we add a wrench to it. So let's go ahead and put a wrench on there. We'll take a, a wrench that's, let's say, 8 inches long. And, of course, that now becomes R, R, little r. And so go ahead and calculate the ideal mechanical advantage of this bolt. Remember, it's 20 threads per inch. Great. Hopefully your calculations look just like mine. The ideal mechanical advantage, 2 pi r, which in this case is 8 inches because we use an 8 inch long wrench, and the threads being 20 threads per inch, you take the inverse of that to get the pitch. So we have a pitch of 120, 1 over 20, 1 inch per 20 threads. Do the calculations, it's over a thousand. All right, we're getting a really, really big mechanical advantage from this. 1,005.31. Well, we're going to round that off uh, to just about 1,000. The actual mechanical advantage. Are we going to see that big a mechanical advantage when you go to spin this thing around into a piece of metal or, or a bolt or something else like that? Well, what's the force required to make this thing spin? And what is the resistance force? Well, we're going to take the resistance force, of course, and divide it by the effort force. And that is the same as all of our actual mechanical advantages that we've been calculating for simple machines. So the forces are given uh, right here. It takes 35 pounds at the end of that 8-inch wrench to make this thing spin. And the downward force that you're getting as you push this, as you turn this uh, screw around, is 12 hundred pounds. So pause the video and do the calculation of the actual mechanical advantage. So let's take a look at your results and see if they agree with my results. Actual mechanical advantage, 1,200 pounds divided by 35 pounds, right? We were getting 1,200 pounds of crushing force as we drove this uh, thread, uh, this threaded uh, screw into our material. And it was only taking 35 pounds to get this thing to spin around. Do the math, you get 34.29, or 34 to 1 ratio. All right? That's excellent. 34 to 1 is a very high mechanical advantage. But it is not as high as the ideal mechanical advantage. There's a pretty big gap there. So let's go ahead and calculate what would be the efficiency of this screw if these were our results. Pause the video and go ahead and do those calculations.
All right, now that we're both done with our calculations, let's compare. Efficiency is the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage multiplied times 100. Well, 34.29 divided by 1,005, well, that's a pretty big difference. We multiply, divide that, multiply times 100, and we get 3.4% efficiency. Wowza, we lost quite a bit. Where did it all go, all right? Why is the efficiency so low? So I'm gonna leave you with that. Um, we'll end here. Thank you so much for watching this video on the Simple Machines family of inclined planes, which included wedges, screws, ideal mechanical advantage, actual mechanical advantage, and efficiency of them.